In this exciting game where every deck is unique, two players race to forge keys that unlock the hidden vaults of the Crucible, an artificial world built from pieces of countless civilizations. The Keyforge two-player starter set contains everything you need to begin your journey on the Crucible. Two Keyforge learning decks, learn to play booklet, a complete set of tokens for two players, and two unique sealed Keyforge decks from a recent set. After a brief overview of the game, learn to play Keyforge by following our step-by-step -step play example. Use the included learning decks as you follow along, either by yourself or with a friend. Keyforge is a two-player card game in which each player takes on the role of an Archon and leads that Archon's team in a race to be the first to forge three keys. Each player uses their own Keyforge deck, which represents their Archon and its team of followers. The players compete to gather the precious resource, Amber. When a player has gathered enough Amber, they can forge a key. The first player to forge three keys is able to unlock a vault and wins the game. This Keyforge tutorial will use the two learning decks found in the Keyforge two-player starter set. They are named Radiant Learning Deck and Onyx Learning Deck. This tutorial will cover all the basic rules for a standard two-player game. If you are following along with your own learning decks, be sure not to mix the two decks together, keep them separate. Each learning deck consists of 20 cards. One of these cards is a Chain Tracker, which will not be needed for this tutorial. The Archon Identity card shows the three houses that are featured in the deck. The reverse side of this card shows a complete list of cards included in the deck. Set each Archon Identity card in each player's play area as a reference. They should be on opposite sides of the play area with a large open space between them. The rest of the cards in each learning deck are the ones that each player will use to play the game. They are numbered 1 through 18 in their upper right-hand corners. Normally, players shuffle their decks at the start of the game, but for this tutorial, we will arrange the decks sequentially. To do this, set down the 1 card, then put the 2 card on top of it, and so on, up to the card 18. Then, flip the entire stack over so that the first card drawn from the deck will be card number 1. Place each stacked deck next to its Archon Identity card. Place a set of three key tokens, one in each color of red, blue, and yellow, next to each Archon Identity card with their unforged sides showing. Next, take all of the game tokens and counters found in the starter set and place them within easy reach of both players. This is called the Common Supply and will be used by both players during the game. Normally, the first player of the game is randomly chosen, but for this tutorial, we will designate the Radiant player as the first player. As first player, the Radiant player draws an opening hand of seven cards. The Onyx player draws an opening hand of six cards. The game is now ready to begin with the Radiant player taking the first turn. Keyforge is played over a series of turns Players alternate taking turns until one player wins the game. Each turn consists of five steps. Forge a key, choose a house, play, discard, and use cards of your chosen house. Ready cards, draw cards. During step one, the actual player checks to see if they have enough amber to forge a key. Amber is the game's basic currency. If you have enough amber to forge a key during the step, you must do so. During step two of your turn, you choose one of the houses on your Archon Identity card to activate, making it the active house for the turn. This active house determines which cards you can play, use, and discard from your hand. Step three is where most of the gameplay happens. During this step, you may play, discard, and use any number of cards of your active house from your hand or that are in play under your control. You can play, use, or discard cards in any order. In step four, you ready all of your exhausted cards, and in step five, you draw cards from the top of your deck until you have six cards in your hand. 
we will revisit these steps and explain them in further detail throughout the tutorial. After the draw card step, your turn is over. Your opponent now takes their turn, and so on, until one player wins the game by being the first to forge three keys. Let's begin now. The Radiant player takes the first turn. The first thing you do each turn is check if you have enough amber to forge a key. The default cost to forge a key is 6 amber. Since the Radiant player has no amber, a key cannot be forged. Next, the Radiant player chooses one of the houses on their Archon Identity card to activate, making it the active house for the remainder of the turn. The active house determines which cards you can play, use, and discard from your hand this turn. The Radiant player declares House Mars as their active house. Note that during the first turn of a game, the active player can only play or discard one card from their hand. In subsequent turns, players may play, use, or discard any number of cards from their active house. With House Mars declared, the Radiant player plays the artifact card Incubation Chamber. Artifact cards enter play exhausted and are played in a row behind the battle line where creatures are played. Artifacts remain in play from turn to turn. Since the Radiant player can only play a single card on their first turn, they move directly to step 4, Ready Cards. Finally, the Radiant player ends their turn with a draw card step. Because the Radiant player already has a hand of 6 cards, no cards are drawn at this time. It is now the Onyx player's turn. The Onyx player has no amber to forge a key, so they move on to step 2 and declare House Brobnar as their active house for the turn. The Onyx player plays two Brobnar creature cards, Headhunter and Valder, which are placed, exhausted, in the Onyx player's battle line. The Onyx player also plays the artifact card Gauntlet of Command, placing it, exhausted, below their battle line. With no other cards to play, the Onyx player readies their cards, orienting them upright. Finally, the Onyx player enters their draw card step and draws three cards from their Archon deck. Play now returns to the Radiant player. With no amber in their pool, the Radiant player cannot forge a key, so they advance to step two, choose a house. This time, the Radiant player declares House Sanctum as their active house. Normally, the Radiant player would now play, use, and discard cards from House Sanctum. However, their Incubation Chamber Artifact card has the Omni ability. A card with the Omni ability may be used on your turn, even if it's on a card you control that does not belong to your active house. Incubation Chamber reads, Reveal a Mars creature from your hand. If you do, archive it. Archived cards are placed face down out of play. At the start of your turn, you may put all cards in your archives into your hand. Having used the Omni ability on Incubation Chamber, the Radiant player reveals the Mars creature Ixel the Iron Captain from their hand and adds it to their archives. We will detail archives a bit later in this tutorial. For now, simply place Ixel the Iron Captain face down next to your discard pile to form a pile of out-of-play archive cards. Next. The Radiant player plays Champion Anaphil, placing it, exhausted, into their battle line. The Radiant player's last Sanctum card is Sergeant Zekiel, who is also placed, exhausted, into the battle line. Note that Sergeant Zekiel has a play ability. Such abilities resolve after the card enters play. In this case, Sergeant Zekiel's play ability reads, You may ready and fight with a neighboring creature. Champion Anaphiel is a neighboring creature, so it is readied and can now fight an enemy creature in the Onyx player's battle line. When you use one of your creatures to fight, it is known as the attacking creature. You exhaust it and choose one eligible creature controlled by your opponent to be fought, which is known as the enemy creature. Each of the two creatures deals an amount of damage equal to its power. All of this damage is dealt simultaneously. If a creature has as much or more damage on it as it has power, the creature is destroyed and placed on top of its owner's discard pile. If a creature has an armor value, the armor prevents that amount of incoming damage each turn. 
the Radiant player chooses Headhunter as Champion Anaphil's target. Champion Anaphil is exhausted and deals 6 damage to Headhunter, which is enough to destroy it. Before it is removed from the battle line, Headhunter simultaneously deals 5 damage back to Champion Anaphil. However, Champion Anaphil has an armor value of 1, so the 5 damage from Headhunter is reduced to 4. The Radiant player places damage counters equal to 4 on Champion Anaphil, and Headhunter is placed in the Onyx player's discard pile. With no other Sanctum cards to play, discard, or use, the Radiant player readies all of their cards in play and draws back up to 6 cards, ending their turn. The Onyx player's next turn begins. The current key cost remains at 6, but they have 0 Amber, so they advance to step 2 and declare Equidon as their active house. The Onyx player plays the Equidon creature cards Gemcoat Vendor and The Old Tinker, placing them, exhausted, into the battle line. Note that the outside edges of your battle line are known as the flanks. When you play a new creature, it enters play exhausted on either flank of your battle line, and your battle line expands outward. Creatures enter play on the flank of your choice. Next, the Onyx player plays the Equidon action card, Forced Retirement. Note that many cards have one or more bonus icons in the upper left corner, below the house icon. After a card with a bonus icon is played, the first thing you do is resolve each bonus icon from top to bottom, one at a time. Resolving bonus icons is mandatory. Forced Retirement has the Capture bonus icon and the Draw bonus icon. The Capture bonus would capture an Amber from your opponent's Amber pool, but since there is no Amber available, it does nothing. The Draw bonus allows the Onyx player to draw one card from the top of their deck. The Onyx player draws card number 10 from their deck, which is the creature card Cope from House Unfathomable. Finally, Force Retirement has a play ability which reads, Destroy a creature. Its controller gains one Amber. The Onyx player chooses to destroy Champion Anaphil, and because the Radiant player is Champion Anaphil's controller, they gain one Amber. The Radiant player removes Champion Anaphil from their battle line and places it in their discard pile. Next, the Radiant player gains one Amber from Forced Retirement's play ability. All of the abilities on the Forced Retirement action card have been resolved, so the Onyx player places it in their discard pile. With no other cards to play, use, or discard on this turn, the Onyx player readies all their cards in play and draws back up to six cards, ending their turn. The Radiant player begins their next turn with one Amber in their Amber pool. The current key cost is 6, so they cannot forge a key. Next, the Radiant player declares Star Alliance as their active house for the turn. As before, the Radiant player uses the Omni ability on their Incubation Chamber Artifact card and places their Ironix Rebel Mars card face down into their archives. Next. The Radiant player plays the upgrade card, Badge of Unity. When you play an upgrade, you attach it to a creature by tucking it partially underneath the creature. Each upgrade remains in play from turn to turn and modifies the creature to which it is attached. Badge of Unity reads, This creature belongs to House Star Alliance in addition to its other houses. The Radiant player attaches the Badge of Unity upgrade card to Sergeant Zekiel so that it belongs to Star Alliance in addition to House Sanctum. Now that Sergeant Zekiel belongs to Star Alliance, it can be used on this turn. Note that in addition to fighting, any ready creature of your active house may reap, or use their action or omni abilities, if any. When you use one of your creatures to reap, the creature exhausts and you gain one amber from the common supply and add it to your amber pool. When a creature uses an action or omni ability, simply exhaust the card and resolve the ability. The Radiant player decides to reap with Sergeant Zekiel. Sergeant Zekiel is exhausted and the Radiant player gains one amber from the common supply. 
Next, the Radiant player plays the creature cards Commander Chan and Medic Ingram to the battle line. Medic Ingram has an ability that can trigger when played, after fighting and after reaping. The ability reads, you may heal 3 damage from a creature and ward it. While resolving a card ability, resolve as much of the ability as can be resolved and ignore any parts of the ability that cannot be resolved. Since there is no damage to heal on any creatures, Medic Ingram only resolves the ward portion of their playability. When a creature is warded, place a ward counter on it. The next time a warded creature would take damage, be destroyed or leave play, instead remove the ward counter. The Radiant player chooses to ward Commander Chan and places a ward counter on it. With no other Star Alliance cards to play, use or discard, the Radiant player readies all their cards in play and draws back up to 6 cards, ending their turn. Play returns to the Onyx player. The Onyx player cannot forge a key because they have zero amber, so they declare unfathomable as their active house. The Onyx player plays the creature card Wicolia to their battle line, exhausting it. Next, the Onyx player chooses to discard their Adult Swim card, placing it in their discard pile. You might want to do this if you have one or more cards in your hand that offer no immediate benefit. Remember, in the last step of your turn, you draw cards from the top of your deck until you have six cards in your hand. Next, the Onyx player plays Cope to their battle line, followed by the Frigerific Rod artifact card. Both cards enter play exhausted, as usual. Frigerific Rod has an amber bonus icon, so the Onyx player adds one amber to their pool. Next, the Onyx player plays the upgrade card Weak Link on the Radiant player's Commander Chan card, increasing the Radiant player's key cost by an additional 6 amber while Commander Chan is exhausted. Weak Link also has the amber bonus icon, so the Onyx player gains another amber token from the common supply. With no other unfathomable cards to play, use or discard, the Onyx player readies all their cards in play and draws back up to 6 cards, ending their turn. The Radiant player has 2 Amber in their Amber pool but cannot yet forge a key. This turn, they declare Sanctum as their active house and use Sergeant Zekiel to fight Cope. Sergeant Zekiel deals 4 damage to Cope, destroying it. Cope simultaneously deals 2 damage, minus 1 for Sergeant Zekiel's armor value, for a total of 1 damage. Next, the Radiant player plays the upgrade card Protect the Weak on Commander Chan, gaining 1 amber from the card's bonus icon. The Radiant player then plays the artifact card Gorm of Om, placing it, exhausted, next to the Incubation Chamber. Next, the Radiant player plays their Mother Northal creature card, followed by their Raiding Knight. Raiding Knight has a playability that reads, Capture 1 Amber. Captured Amber is taken from your opponent's pool and placed on this creature. If this creature leaves play, return that amber to your opponent's pool. The Radiant player removes one amber from the Onyx player's amber pool and places it on Raiding Knight. With no other Sanctum cards to play, use or discard, the Radiant player readies all of their cards in play and draws back up to six cards. Note that the Radiant player's deck is now empty. The Onyx player cannot yet forge a key. The current key cost remains at 6, and they only have 1 Amber. The Onyx player declares Equidon as their active house for the turn. First, the Onyx player exhausts Gem Coat Vendor and uses its action ability to steal 1 Amber from the Radiant player's Amber pool. 
Gem Coat Vendor's playability also deals one damage to itself. Next, the Onyx player exhausts the old Tinker, using it to reap, which gains one amber from the common supply. The old Tinker also has an After Reap ability, which reads, discard a card from your hand, draw a card. The Onyx player chooses to discard Uncommon Currency from their hand and draws Kelp Minder. Note that the Onyx player has now depleted their deck. Next, the Onyx player plays the creature card Transitory Philosopher, playing it exhausted into their battle line. Note that Transitory Philosopher has a draw bonus icon so the Onyx player can draw another card. Since their draw deck is depleted, the Onyx player shuffles their discard pile, forming a new deck to draw from. For the purposes of this tutorial, the next card drawn will be card number 6, Forced Retirement. With their deck reformed, the Onyx player again draws Forced Retirement and immediately puts it into play. As before, the Onyx player resolves Forced Retirement's bonus icons in order before the card's ability takes place. Forced Retirement is an action card, so when the capture bonus is resolved, the Onyx player may choose any creature in their battle line to capture it. The Onyx player captures one Amber from the Radiant player's Amber pool and chooses to place the captured Amber on Volder. Next, Forced Retirement's draw bonus icon allows the Onyx player to draw a card from their deck. They draw Headhunter. Finally, Forced Retirement's play ability reads, destroy a creature, its controller gains one amber. The Onyx player chooses to destroy Raiding Knight, and the Radiant player, its controller, gains one amber. When a creature with captured amber leaves play, any amber on it is returned to the opponent's amber pool, so the Onyx player reclaims their captured amber. Next. The Onyx player plays Belligerent Guard, which enters play ready. Belligerent Guard's playability allows the Radiant player to draw a card, so they also shuffle their discard pile to form a new draw deck. The Radiant player again draws Champion Anaphio. Last, the Onyx player uses Belligerent Guard to reap and gains one amber from the common supply. The Onyx player now readies all of their cards in play and draws back up to six cards, ending their turn. Play returns to the Radiant player. The current key cost is six, and they have two amber, so they cannot forge a key. This turn, the Radiant player declares Mars as their active house. During step two of your turn, after you select an active house, you may pick up all cards in your archives and add those cards to your hand. With some planning, this can allow you to have an unusually large amount of cards in your hand. The Radiant player chooses to pick up all the cards in their archives, adding them to their hand. The Radiant player now enters step three of their turn with nine total cards in their hand. First, the Radiant player uses the Omni ability on Gorm of Om, which reads, Destroy Gorm of Om, destroy an artifact. The Radiant player destroys Gorm of Om and then chooses to destroy the Onyx player's Gauntlet of Command artifact. Next, the Radiant player plays Ixel the Iron Captain, which has a play ability that reads, Each friendly Ironix creature captures two amber. Creature cards include traits, which are descriptive words. They have no rules, but may be referred to in card abilities. Since Ixel the Iron Captain has the Iron X trait, it captures two amber from the Onyx player. Next, the Radiant player plays Mix the Tall Minded, putting it exhausted into the battle line. The Radiant player then plays Iron X Rebel, which has the Deploy ability. Rather than following the normal flank rules, creatures with Deploy can be played anywhere in its owner's battle line. The Radiant player decides to play Iron X Rebel between Ixel the Iron Captain and Mix the Tall Minded. Iron X Rebel also has a play ability which reads, Ready each of Iron X Rebel's Mars neighbors. 
Excel the Iron Captain and Mix the Tall Minded are readied and can now be used. Next, the Radiant player plays Zissa 6 Shockworm to the battle line, and then plays the action card Destroy Them All, which, when played, destroys an artifact, a creature, and an upgrade. The Radiant player chooses to destroy the Frigorific Rod artifact, the Valder creature card, which returns its captured amber to the Radiant player's amber pool, and the Weak Link upgrade card. The Radiant player then reaps with Ixil the Iron Captain and Mix the Tall Minded, gaining an amber for each. With no other cards to play, use or discard, the Radiant player readies all their cards in play and draws two cards by first drawing Raiding Knight and then reshuffling their discard pile to form a new draw deck and drawing Gorm of Om, bringing their hand back to six for the end of the turn. The Onyx player, with only three amber, cannot yet forge a key. This turn, they declare Brobnar as their active house. First, the Onyx player puts Headhunter back into the battle line. Next, they play the upgrade card Blood of Titans, attaching it to Headhunter, which gives it an additional plus five power. Blood of Titans includes an amber bonus icon, so the Onyx player gains one amber from the common supply. Next, the Onyx player plays the creature cards Grenade Snib and Krog the Clumsy to their battle line. With no other Brobnar cards to play, use, or discard this turn, the Onyx player readies all their cards in play and draws back up to six cards. The Radiant player nearly has enough amber to forge their first key, but are still short by an amber. They again declare Star Alliance as their active house for the turn. First, the Radiant player fights with Commander Chan, choosing Wicolia as the target. Commander Chan deals 4 damage and Wicolia deals 3. Wicolia is destroyed and Commander Chan's ward token is removed, preventing the incoming damage. Commander Chan also has an after fight ability which reads, use another friendly creature. Because this ability does not specify a Star Alliance creature, the Radiant player may use any of the ready creatures in their battle line. The Radiant player chooses to reap with Mother Northal, gaining one amber from the common supply. Mother Northal also has an after reap ability which reads, move one amber from a friendly creature to your pool. Mother Northal moves one amber from Ixel the Iron Captain and moves it to the Radiant player's Amber Pool. Next, the Radiant player plays Tactical Officer Moon to the battle line. Tactical Officer Moon has a play ability that reads, you may rearrange the creatures in a player's battle line. As this is an optional play ability, we will choose to ignore it for this tutorial. Then, the Radiant player reaps with Sergeant Zekiel who still has the Badge of Unity upgrade card attached. Another Amber is taken from the common supply and added to the Radiant player's pool. Next, the Radiant player reaps with Medic Ingram to gain yet another Amber. Then, Medic Ingram's After Reap ability triggers and the Radiant player chooses to heal and ward Sergeant Zekiel. The Radiant player then plays Explo Rover as a creature adding it, exhausted, to the battle line. And finally, the Radiant player plays the Zap action card, which has an amber bonus icon. The Radiant player gains another amber from the common supply, bringing their pool up to 10. Zap has a play ability that reads, deal one damage to a creature for each house represented among creatures in play. There are currently five different houses represented by all creatures in play, so the Radiant player targets Gem Coat Vendor, deals 5 damage, and destroys it. With no other Star Alliance cards to play, use, or discard, the Radiant player readies all of their cards in play and draws the remaining cards in their deck. 
With 10 amber in their amber pool, the Radiant player now declares, Check! This warns the Onyx player that unless they can prevent it, the Radiant player will forge a key at the beginning of their next turn. The Onyx player cannot forge a key. Since Mix the Tall-Minded is currently in play, the Onyx player's keys cost an additional amber for each of the Radiant player's friendly Mars creatures in play. There are four such creatures in play, so the Onyx player's keys currently cost a total of 10 amber to forge. The Onyx player again chooses Brobnar as their active house for the turn. With three Brobnar creatures in play, the Onyx player could reap with all three of them to gain more amber, but they would still not have enough to forge a key next turn because of Mix the Tall-Minded. To make matters worse, Ziza Six Shockworm has an ability that reads, after an enemy creature reaps, stun it. When a creature is stunned, a stun counter is placed on it. The next time that creature is used, it can do nothing except exhaust and remove its counter. Instead of reaping, the Onyx player decides to fight with Headhunter, choosing Mix the Tall-Minded as its target. Headhunter is exhausted and deals 10 total damage thanks to the Blood of Titans upgrade. Mix the Tall-Minded is destroyed but simultaneously deals 5 damage back to Headhunter. Again, because Headhunter has the Blood of Titans upgrade, its power is currently 10, so it takes 5 damage and remains in play. Headhunter also has the After Fight ability Gain 1 Amber, so they claim an Amber from the common supply. Next, the Onyx player fights with Krog the Clumsy, choosing Ixel the Iron Captain as its target. Krog the Clumsy deals 7, minus 1 point of armor, for a total of 6 damage to Ixel the Iron Captain, enough to destroy it. Ixel simultaneously deals 4 damage back. Additionally, Krog the Clumsy has Splash Attack 2. Creatures with Splash Attack deal damage to each of the opposing creature's neighbors so 2 damage is placed on Medic Ingram and 2 damage is placed on Iron X Rebel, destroying it. Iron X Rebel and Ixel the Iron Captain are discarded, and Ixel's captured Amber is returned to the Onyx player's Amber Pool. Next, the Onyx player fights with Grenade Snib. Medic Ingram would be an easy target for Grenade Snib, but since Commander Chan has the Protect the Weak upgrade card, they have the Taunt ability and plus one armor. Taunt means that Commander Chan's neighbors cannot be attacked. Note also that Grenade Snib has a Destroyed ability which reads, your opponent loses two amber. Destroying Grenade Snib in a fight is actually in the Onyx player's best interest, so they decide to attack Commander Chan directly. Grenade Snib deals two minus one armor from Protect the Weak for a total of one damage. Commander Chan simultaneously deals 4 damage back to Grenade Snib, destroying it. This triggers Grenade Snib's destroyed ability, so the Radiant player returns 2 Amber to the common supply, and Grenade Snib is discarded. Finally, the Onyx player plays Valder to the battle line. With no other cards to play, use or discard, the Onyx player readies all their cards in play and draws back up to 6 cards. At last, the Radiant player begins their turn by spending 6 Amber from their Amber Pool to forge their first key. Thank you for following along on this tutorial. By now you understand the basics of Key Forge. If you've been following along with your own Learn to Play decks, what do you think the Radiant player should do next? The choice is yours.